Hello everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Victor and uh, I'm responsible for telemetry. And uh, Akshat and Patrick talked about how you can manage a device and uh, basically telemetry, my topic covers how you can monitor this device. And this is kind of important because you, you need to know uh, what is going on before you're trying to apply something and what has happened after you apply it. So you, you need to be sure. And uh, basically, telemetry is a kind of popular topic these days. Uh, each and every vendor tries to talk about this. And, um, but bef before you jump into some technology, uh, you as an engineer, you really want to understand what is, what is behind the scene, right? So how does it work? Why should I really switch to this new, for me, technology? And what are the benefits behind? And t today I'm not going to talk about a lot about uh, collector side. So uh, there will be a separate session about this. Mostly we will be talking about, about what is going on inside, inside the router and uh, how is it possible to achieve, uh, to be sure that telemetry can be really deterministic over the time. So you, you configure it something like, I want to stream my data each two seconds or each or each five seconds and uh, how it is really possible to achieve. Why, why should I trust this solution and that it will not be changed in five days, right? And something will be switched. So um, today I will try to, to cover this. I don't have a lot of time, but I'll try. And um, there will be another question that I will cover later. Uh, while I was thinking how it is possible to show what is inside IUSXR from telemetry point of view. I decided to present telemetry as layers. S something that is very close to any engineer like OSI model, right? And uh, at this picture, you have four bottom layers. They represent a router. And top layer is analytics, like basically something that you will use for your logic, for your decision solutions. Uh, the bottom layer, uh, covers databases within the router. Usually, you as a, as a consumer or as a customer, you, you don't care a lot about this layer. You, you just know that, yeah, we have a modular router. It has a big number of databases inside. They should be optimized, optimal. They, they should do what they need to do. Uh, usually, what you will care from telemetry point of view is these three layers, right? Uh, the first one, one is modeling. Right, we have those databases inside. We want to get information. So how can I get this information? How can I define what I really need? That's, that's this model layer. Next layer, okay, I, I found what I want. Now I need to, to stream this out. And that is basically second layer. That defines, an, you, you, you want to be granular, right? And uh, this is exactly where it happens. And fi final piece from your router is how you want to ex export this or how you want to transfer this information. And uh, <coughs> the main point for me as an engineer is like each layer should be independent. And this is also important for, from development point of view. For instance, if at some point I want to add some different encoding here at the exporter layer, I want to do it and have all the same as it was, right? Like recently we added JSON and everything that is below and above <coughs> should work, keep on working. So adding a new protocol <coughs> should not influence other things. Um, the first question that comes from each and every customer like, okay, you have model layer, what you can do? Where can I find those models? And how can I explore them? This is the place on GitHub where we post uh, our models right the same day as we release a new iOS XR version. So the latest one for today, 631. And the same day when it was published on Cisco.com, we publish the models. iOS XR is based on young telemetry, uh, young based telemetry. Uh, Starting from 611, we had around 150 models. Uh, today, in 631, we have almost 200 native models. 
based on Young. Uh, we are trying to develop those models um, according to what our customers use from SNMP point of view and also expanding these to other features that <coughs> exist uh, that you can get from iOS XR. And um, 200 models is pretty big number uh, and you, you can get really a lot of details right? starting from control plane down to data plane. You can, you can have um, NPU counters, di different uh, counters. Uh, you can also have uh, some information that probably you don't need right when you start doing telemetry. Something like uh, ISIS SPF counter time. So how much time it took for a router to do some calculations. Yeah, probably you don't care about this from the very beginning. But at some point later, you might think, okay, how fast is my router? How, how I can check what is going on internally and you, you, you know that you have this information available for you right, right now. Uh, we also support open config models. Uh, as of today, something around 20 models uh, are available. Um, and you, you can also find them uh, on the same site. Uh, model by itself uh, gives you information based on the name, like what is inside. The model can have like BGP or ISIS or something else. But uh, then the question comes, okay, what is inside? Right, so by, by the name you can guess, yes, it should be something about this protocol or that protocol. But how can I explore and understand w what is inside? I usually go with just Pyong. So I, I, I'm looking in, into tree structure of this model and just finding what I can get there, just finding information. Recently, I got one customer who said, oh, I don't understand Pyong, how can I? Maybe there is a graphical way. So, and by, any, by some chance, I just got information that Cisco has developed something, uh, Young Explorer. Uh, it is a bit easier for someone who doesn't want to play with CLI it's pretty easy to install. It took me just five minutes to go through the setup and um, to get it up and running. And basically, it kind of kind of the same. But you you are working you're using your mouse and clicks. And uh, bo both a lot of people have only ever worked with SNMP MIB walkers. Yeah, they don't, exactly. I mean, you can't read an SNMP MIB <coughs> that easily. Yeah. yeah. And we have a lot of platforms that you give us a MIB walker, so that looks like a MIB walker. Hmm. Well, similar, yeah, but. A good point that uh, when you read the model, it contains human readable words, and uh, yeah. you just you almost just ruined that for me. <laughs> <laughs> almost. I know a lot of people who would look at the thing on the right and go, "I understand that." Yeah. The thing on the left, they would go, <laughs> "Yeah." No, mm, there is a moment that you should pay attention for. Mm. Uh, not only we have a big number of models, like two hundred native models, but uh, each model can contain really a big number of details inside, or a big number of leaves. Here is, for instance, MPLST. MPLST by default is very complicated and very powerful within iOS XR. And all of this information is available through the model. It contains 40,000 leaves, right? So you, you, can, you can get 40,000 counters just, just from this exact model. And um, if you want to scale your telemetry or uh, improve your telemetry experience, right? You, you don't want to stream everything, right? For instance, if you want to get information about auto mesh tunnels, you, you don't want to stream each and every counter. Just just try to be very specific. So going through the Pyank or Young Explorer tool, you, you can define exactly what, what branch or what leaf you, you want to use. And that's not the end of the story, right? Um, IOS XR supports filtering within, within uh, IOS XR, within telemetry. For instance, uh, very popular question like, okay, I have a big, very big number of interfaces, but I want to get statistics from, say, 100G interfaces. I don't want to know about all 10G or sub-interfaces or something else. How can I do this? And here you can uh, go with filtering. Y you can make filtering and this filtering is um, internally very efficient. So um, 
I, I have a slide that talks uh, how it is done internally. Um, basically, with filtering, you're just defining that I want this information. You don't have any drops internally. So, like, yeah. In is this, I think on your slide, you were showed InfluxDB and Prometheus. Is that what this is? No, using? no, it's, 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 it's a bit different. Yeah, okay. so you have uh, two ways how you can do okay. filtering. You can do filtering at the sender side or you can do filtering at the receiver side. And there are pros and cons uh, for each method, for instance. If you're thinking, uh, okay, <coughs> probably I don't care about this information right now, but I might care about this in future, you, you can stream everything, and then you can store, and then you can okay. um, do filtering on the receiver side. But if you know, okay, yes, I, I will never care about 10G interfaces, so let, let me just stream what I want. And you, you do filtering on the sender side. Mm, and... Um, filtering and models uh, that was on the first layer models. Right now we're moving into producer layer and let me jump to demo. I have a number of demo, but uh, I don't know how we will be with time. So th I have six routers, different routers, NCS 5K, that is FRETA, ISR 9K, that is based on classic XR. And one comment is that telemetry is applicable not only for evolved XR or 64-bit XR. You can also use this for classic or QNX-based XR. I have six routers, and right now I am streaming uh, around 315K counters each five seconds to telemetry, to one destination. Uh, please don't pay attention to this guy. It is being test, uh, under test right now by engineering. So, uh, this, <laughs> yeah, this is not uh, my specific demo, right? So I just. Borrowed. You guys also provide the templates for Grafana. I will cover. I will cover this. It, it was my second part. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I'll sorry. I'll yeah. So uh, and I, I have uh, quite, quite. Uh, oops, sorry. I have quite a few templates here and most of them are very valuable i yeah. hope yeah so <laughs> right right now i stream this information more than 300,000 counters each five seconds just to one destination just pay attention like nine mostly nine percent you have uh, cpu load f for each router again don't pay attention to this guy so uh, i'm activating another telemetry destination. Right now you see that nothing is being streamed to a second destination. Right? So let, let's see, let, let's hope that it works. <laughs> this web interface, uh, it's not a Cisco tool, right? It just was written a week before. It's something you wrote. Oh, uh, yeah. J j just just not to, s to jump between windows and uh, yeah. miss you, mess you up with mm. all the CLI and all that stuff. Okay, so we start. <coughs> uh, let me come back to my slides. And uh, this is very important. Uh, you, you can, uh, th this is SNMP, how SNMP works internally. This is how telemetry works internally. Some information about SNMP internals is available right now on some site based on Cisco. There is no link right now for MDT architecture. I will post this sometime soon. I just need, it is not a real representation 101 how it, may, how it is made internally. I need to think how, what is the best way to show this and explain in very details. But the main message here is that each time you have an SNMP request, you go into each table and you try to get information from each table individually. And if you have two SNMP polars, you'll have to go into each table twice. Mm -hmm. And th that's the principle of uh, SNMP. With iOS XR, uh, if you're trying to get, for instance, interface counters, IFNIP information, mostly you will go into cache. There is a specific cache that is uh, aligned with the MIPD interface. So each 30 seconds, this cache is being populated just not to, to traverse um, all the way down to each counter on each line card. So in m most of the cases you will cache, uh, you will get this information from the cache. With streaming telemetry, the main difference, right? Again, again, this is an ugly picture, but I just tried to make it similar to SNMP to show the difference. And the difference is right here. 
with SNMP, you have information streamed out of from each database. And then you, you, you go into telemetry infrastructure, telemetry process inside. And uh, the main goal is, yes, to ma make it faster. And plus, when you have several destinations, not, not to have the same uh, behavior as with SNMP, like adding one more destination uh, brings the same amount of load for the device. So right now it's pretty stable and uh, yeah, SR9K that is based on RSP 440, right? It's pretty old or previous generation of RSP. It, it increased plus 1%, adding just, just the second destination. Uh, you, you you didn't see the increase like, okay, it was 9% plus 9% more. Adding second destination gives you <coughs> almost nothing. How many data points can you get with the streaming te telemetry? Uh, well, it, it depends on what you can, uh, what, you, what you want. Right now I am, I am streaming more than 300,000, right? Counters, five seconds. I, um, I have a slide later there i did it was around 550k or to, um, 550 or 550,000 right to 600,000 so but it's, i'm it's just not, it's thinking not about microburst i don't know on cpus or other data yeah you would see that much more granular with, with this yeah uh, yes for microburst you have to go you have to decrease sample interval yes and um, as I mentioned, for instance, interface counters, they are, they are cached for uh, SNMP MIP uh, inside ISXR. And this is probably good for the router, but it's not good for you. And uh, th these are snapshots from Grafana when I'm collecting information using SNMP and trying to do 10 seconds interval and the same information using telemetry. Yeah, you, you, you see those spikes. Basically, the, uh, it is based on uh, counters, and I'm just trying to find the, the difference, the speed of difference. And, and you see, basically, each, each time it goes down, it, it means the same information arrives. And these are something around 30 seconds. While with streaming telemetry, you have this in, in real time. And, and the load on CPU, uh, load on the router is not that big. Mm. Um, that was middle layer where you defined uh, your, your speed, how, how fast you want information uh, to be streamed out. And uh, you, you can do it per model, right? You can combine several models, right? You, you can f have like interfaces, yeah, I want to do it each five seconds. Some information like inventory, I don't need to push very often. I, I can just stream this information just each five minutes or We'll talk, I will talk some uh, about event-driven telemetry soon also. Uh, n next final layer is uh, exporter. Basically, you, you have this information, you define what you need, you define how fast you want this information to be streamed out, and now you need to prepare this information. With telemetry, you, you will have a big amount of data to be streamed out. And what you want is to have this process as much effective as possible. Right? Th that's why some specific encoding was uh, used or is used for telemetry. We started with GPB and we have two flavors of GPB that is called GPB complex and key value. And uh, the, the goal of GPB is like take all those strings and make them binary just for the most efficient way to put this on the wire. Uh, GPB Compact uh, requires you to have protofiles. And with protofiles, you encode information and you need to have the same protofile on the receiver end to decode this information. And um, that is kind of, kind of similar to NetFlow, right? You, you need to have a template to understand what's going on and protofiles kind of the same. Uh, key value GPB uh, was also added uh, at the very beginning just to make it easier for you to start playing with telemetry. 
it, it has the same header as Compact GPB, but uh, the keys there uh, are, are present, uh, represented as strings. So you, your collector, your receiving end, uh, should be able to understand you, using just one proto file how to decode this information. You, you don't need to have a proto file for each model as it is needed for GPB Compact. <coughs> and uh, very recently, JSON was added. Uh, Again, there are customers who said like, okay, GPB is GPB, but uh, can, can, can we have also JSON? J just because we understand this. So JSON was added, and um, the point across all those uh, encoding options is that you can use any encoding option with any protocol you want. So you can mix and match everything, right? You, you, you're not tired to, to do something specifically, and uh, yeah, and uh, Protofiles, they might sound something scareful, but they are not. They just, just represent the information that you, you find uh, within your uh, young model, right? This is an example from MPLST uh, out to mesh tunnels, and this is corresponding protofile. It's, it's, uh, it's not that awful, and uh, mo most of the protofiles are posted on GitHub, Page. So, I have uh, several discussions right now going on with several guys. They, they're building their own collector and they, they're asking for proto files because they want to proceed with compact GPB or just usual version GPB. Uh, and it's kind of typical. You want to start testing with something that is simple and very fast, like you, you, you configure it and check, yeah, cool. When you go into production, GPB is very efficient. It's efficient, it is very efficient for encoding itself it is, and it is very efficient for uh, serialization or putting this on the wire. Yeah, because it's binary. So you, you encoded this information and now you, you need to send this out. And there are again several options possible just because different customers have different requirements. <coughs> uh, we have, initially we had gRPC and TCP, and recently UDP was all added again. Based, based on customer feedback and requests, we, we keep on adding and improving. Um, gRPC still uh, is the most popular one, choice across all the customers. Uh, it gives a number of benefits as, as far as it is based on HTTP2. And uh, it also has dialing capability. Uh, that is a capability where your collector can make a call in <coughs> to your uh, device and y you can do some configuration and you can also request telemetry. That is something I think uh, Akshat mentioned uh, in his slides. Mm, the most common way is still dial out when you just de define on your, on your router. Yeah, just stream this information to this, this and that collector and just push and information is ready. What you also need to understand from transport pro uh, point of view is that with, for instance, SNMPv3, you have encryption capabilities. You, you can uh, hide uh, the information that is being transferred. With UDP and TCP, information is in clear text. When I used Wireshark to, to check how it behaves internally, I was able to see all the information inside. gRPC, based on HTTP2 and it has TLS capability. So it, it can help you with the protection of your data. Uh, for dial out mode, when your router sends information to, to your collector, you encrypt your data. Uh, in case of dial in, you, you need to specify login password for, uh, on the collector from your router. And it is also being encoded. Without TLS, you will have this in clear text available. <coughs> there is one more thing that is uh, applicable to internal infrastructure is that, okay, we have the, the, our data, we define this. We found uh, how fast we want to stream this and uh, we optimized this information. The, the final step is 
okay, I need to send this uh, as fast as possible, right? Encoding, yes, but internal infrastructure should be ready for this. And uh, there is specific encoding engine that has all the information before the data comes into it, right? So uh, b before information, bef before our counters from from uh, databases come to this encoding engine, it, it has information about the young model and it knows that I need to put this counter into this place. I need to put that counter into that place. So everything is prearranged. And as soon as data comes, it's just ready to go. It doesn't need to build anything about that. And also starting with 6 to something, 6 to 2, uh, we have multi-threading internally. So uh, this process of getting that data uh, internally can be done in parallel. So opt optimizations are, uh, are done over the time. Um, final piece here is that, yes, internally it is optimal, but uh, it should be also easy for you to, to configure this. Uh, I put here CLI, but uh, I mean, ju just, just because it's easier to read. But uh, you can also use YDK, for instance, to, to automate configuration. And there are examples that are posted uh, that include how you can configure telemetry. Uh, you don't need to have any license to run telemetry and you don't need to install any package above. So everything that you need for telemetry is in router by default. You just configure this, all the models, all the proto files if you need them, all the transport protocols are inside. So you, you don't need to test your skills to install something else. Starting with 631 and 631 was out uh, last year, end of last year. Uh, Event-driven telemetry was added to our portfolio. Uh, and it is not a separate instance or it is not a replacement of model-driven telemetry, it's just an addition complementary to uh, model-driven telemetry. So how telemetry works, right? Uh, you, you defined your sample intervals and it streams data, each sample interval, and if something happens, it just streams you the update. This is the way MDT works. With event-driven telemetry, based on the name, you can see that, okay, initially we send the, the full dump of information of what we have internally, and then we keep silence. As soon as something happened, cool, we're sending the update. Uh, and model-driven telemetry mm, is most optimal for like interface counters, for something that you want uh, information to be updated uh, regularly or uh, for instance uh, uh, we have pluggables right and we want to know in real time rig sticks power and laser, laser bias for the for the optics uh, but for instance if interface goes down I, I don't want to have this information streamed to me um, each two seconds that all interfaces are up I want this information available to me as soon as it happens. And uh, that's, that's the purpose of uh, event-driven telemetry. We don't have full coverage right now. Uh, it will be enhanced and improved with each release. Uh, more and more model will be added. Um, the one more point that is interesting for everyone who starts talking about telemetry is uh, what is the bandwidth need for telemetry? Um, if I configure this simple interval, sample interval, well, what, what will be the requirement? What is the expectation from a bandwidth point of view? So uh, I did a simple test. I just took one single router, 5516 NCS, uh, 16 slot chassis that was fully loaded with a line card with 100 G ports and um, started line rate traffic. Uh, and for most of, of these uh, uh, young paths, let's say, 
uh, I, I streamed information each 10 seconds, except for interface state and uh, reap info, um, because I moved with event-driven telemetry for this. <coughs> and uh, for these uh, sample interval and uh, the counters, uh, it was more than 550K, right? 550K counters. Uh, CPU load was something around 6 to 7%. And uh, you, you, you can see that uh, for gRPC and uh, Kivalu GPB, the most popular encoding and transport, the load was less than 5 megabits. Uh, in, in case of uh, compact GPB, it is less than 1 megabit. Uh, these guys, they took most of the bandwidth. So when I activated them in uh, not event-driven mode, so when just, just stream, uh, stream information about each route, uh, it took way more bandwidth, around 60 megabits. Because uh, IPv4 RIP, and this is 650K, or al almost uh, full view BGP, uh, it was uh, around 5 million counters. Because information about each single route was delivered yeah. separately. 650 routes with, you know, 20 or 30 data points is going to yeah, just add. Yeah. So it, it was 5 million. So uh, initially in my slides, I, I put information here, but people were confused, like, oh, I need 50 megabits. No. You, you, you want to proceed with something that you don't need uh, to yeah. stream. You don't need to poll the entire route yeah. every 30 yeah. seconds. When, when, uh, when I have addition of route or removal of route, I want to stream this information. Yeah. I don't want to stream... I don't about want to issue. pull the entire rib yeah. 30 seconds apart and then subtract exactly. the two to find out exactly. what the deltas are. That's pointless. Yeah. But still it was possible. Yeah. Yeah, CPU was CPU around is a stupid nine. Curve. Yeah, <laughs> CPU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, do you know yeah. on the Grafana side how much uh, this will take? Telemetry for one day or something? Do you have any uh, insights on that side? So when I, when I did this test uh, and I switched into typical mode, I had uh, something around one gigabyte of data for one minute, okay. roughly. And uh, yes, I had issues with influx, not with Grafana, but with influx. And actually, in my, with my two destinations, one is based on SSD and one is based on HDD. The one that is based on HDD has some delays with recording information. Um, so we, we streamed information out. Uh, sometimes you may want to give some priority to those packets. And you, you can mark uh, IP headers with DCP. Right? So, yeah, we stream information out, but yeah, l let's make sure that it is if, mm. right? DCP if. So you, you, you can play with this information. So in the second question is, uh, okay, we have telemetry. Uh, what I can do with telemetry above interface counters, CPU, and memory? Because each session that I saw uh, is like, yeah, guys, here you go, Grafana and blah, blah, blah. And you can see CPU counters or interface counters, CPU, and memory. And then we have a nice tool that you can buy. And uh, my question was, uh, okay, so, but if I don't want to interact with sales guys from any vendor, can I, can I try something above that using telemetry and, uh, and open source tools and then decide like what exactly I want and then to have exact discussions with vendors and mm -hmm. about real solutions that are needed for me. So, and, uh, what I'm doing right now is um, I'm trying to create those <coughs> use cases for IOSXR based on, on telemetry uh, that is available in, in our software um, that will be helpful for people. To start with telemetry, you, you don't, as I said, you don't need any license, right? And you don't need, if you, if you don't want, you don't need to jump into evolved XR. You, you can stay with classic XR. You, you just need something above 611 release. 6.2 probably is the best one. 
Uh, and we have support even for ISR 9001. So the smaller pizza box, and it was and still is very popular across service providers. Uh, so you, you, can, you can use on any platform. The only difference is that in classic XR, you don't have gRPC as a transport. But TCP works the same. And uh, I didn't put into my um, data rate table, but TCP and gRPC has almost the same encoding uh, efficiency on the, on the wire. It took the same amount of bytes, the same mm -hmm. amount of time to, to get this information. Um, we also have not just IP routers, we have optical devices, that is NCS1K. And uh, the primal go goal of NCS1K is to have data center interconnect. And it is based on IOSXR and you can also stream information out of optical devices. And this is very convenient. So for instance, you, you have XR in your data center, you have DCI to interconnect those data center, and you, have the, you can have the same management and operations for both worlds. So if you're interested in things like OSNR or PMD or chromatic dispersion, you, you can stream this information out. And I've already, for, for this use case, I've already created uh, what you need to have. Metrics uh, and uh, Grafana dashboards. And I posted this on GitHub and uh, explained how, how you can use this. The final piece, right, so yes, we defined which box and which software we want to use. <coughs> this is uh, the whole pipeline of what you need to, to have telemetry <coughs> up and running and to have this for free. Uh, pipeline that was posted uh, on GitHub a year ago. Uh, it was created in Cisco and shared. It basically transforms information in telemetry into something that will be acceptable by time series database on, or you can push this on Kafka. And you can visualize this using Grafana. Uh, I'm trying to build a number of use cases uh, based on open source tools, mostly in FluxDB and Grafana. I'm not trying to sell in FluxDB, but I just started working with the FluxDB and found it nice. You didn't need to change it after you got to it. Yeah. <laughs> it worked near enough. Yeah, and um, I think I don't have time to, to show something, but um, the most interesting cases that I hear from the customers I'm talking to is like, okay, okay, automation is cool, but can we somehow improve our troubleshooting? Can we make shorter time to see what's going on or to react faster? Automation, yeah, yeah, we, we will do it later, but can, can we start, start doing something today? And uh, <coughs> the first use case is just real-time BGP map. When, when you have information about <coughs> your BGP routing table on each router, and then you can see in real-time changes. So in, in my demo, I have several scripts running all the time that try to simulate information, like I have peering down I, or I have update of routes. And you, you can basically see this information in real time. You can uh, also, I have a script that uh, will try to find the most unstable peering router for you. Right, so if you, if you have several locations with uh, peering routers and uh, you, you see that it's some location, or you, you want to find location that is most unstable, yeah, you, can, you can just use telemetry. And you, and you will see exact date and time when something happened. Here are actually two use cases. The, the first one is simple, right? You, you want to see in real time how uh, equally your bundle uh, interface is loaded, right? So, this is a bundle with four interfaces. This is a bundle with three interfaces. And you can, you can see in real time the load on this. And you, in, if something goes wrong, you can start reacting, right? Uh, or if you think that, oh, okay, I see drops <coughs> on this bundle instead of uh, upgrading this bundle or adding more interfaces, you can just start checking what is wrong. And then you can try to think what's, what, what you can do to improve this. <coughs> and this, this is a very, uh, 
simple use case. Uh, you have traffic, uh, summary traffic in and summary traffic out. And uh, basically you expect that it should be equal, right? Information that you get into the router should be equal to the information you, you have out of the router. And if something goes wrong, um, I have an integration with Slack. So you, you, you can see that, yeah, I have silent drop in this router. It can be in fabric and can be in NPU somewhere, but I will, I will be able to react very efficiently and very fast, and then I will just start troubleshooting. It is kind of simil similar to BGP, but it goes down into NPU. Th this is uh, LEM and LPM tables uh, from Jericho, right? So NCS 55 box, uh, boxes are based on Jericho. And I can stream in real time information about how those tables are consumed, right? And uh, I can also specify like how many IP routes, IPv6 and PLS and so on I have inside. And those tables are not very big and I can put thresholds and if something goes wrong, I will be notified ahead of time. And the, f the final piece, um, sometimes bad things happen and uh, you might have RIP, FIP inconsistencies, right? So you have information updated into RIP, but not into the FIP. With telemetry, you can just stream this information and then you, you can just try to find uh, the difference between RIB and FIP. And if it is a flat line, everything is good. If something goes wrong, just notify me into Slack and I will start troubleshooting that something went wrong. And you, 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 you can do it very easily and you, you will be able to react. So here I just uh, simulated the situation using some internal comments, but uh, everything was flat. I, I don't have links to GitHub right now, but as soon as I finish and Right now, sometimes alarms, <laughs> I have false alarms, uh, but when it will be fine-tuned, it is based on variables. I mean, it's not hard-coded, so I will just share and hope you can it start can be <coughs> on. Yeah, start using this.